Hello and welcome back to uh, part two of linear regression uh, machine learning tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be actually implementing the algorithm and using it to predict and uh, test uh, or train our data sets and models and whatnot. Uh, but at first, before I move into that, I'm actually going to be explaining what linear regression is using a few drawings and uh, kind of some mathematical proofs and whatnot. So if you guys uh, would like to understand how this is actually working, please watch through the entire video. If you're more interested in just the coding aspect of it, uh, that's fine. Just skip through uh, to about like four or five minutes. So essentially when I'm done doing all of the drawings, you can kind of tell that by just looking at the preview in the little uh, slider, all right? But I do recommend you watch this because uh, it'll give you a fundamental understanding. And that's pretty interesting and I find it interesting as well. So anyways, let's talk about what linear regression is. So linear regression is a very basic algorithm. And what that algorithm attempts to do is it looks at a scatter of data points and attempts to uh, find a best fit line to those data points. So if I add, uh, or I'll create like a, a little plot here of some data, and I will show you what a best fit line to this data might look like, okay? Um, so this is our data. I'm just gonna say, say that this is our Y axis like this, and this is our X axis or axis, I don't know, however you say it. And our best fit line to this data point would look something like this, okay? Um, it's not perfect, but something along this line. And we can see that there's some kind of correlation between X and Y, whereas X increases, Y increases as well. And we can see that it starts kind of at a certain value, all right? So we see there's some sort of correlation. So we can actually draw this best fit line to this data, okay? Uh, and this is what linear regression is going to attempt to do. Now, I just want to show actually another data set and show um, when linear regression may not be the best uh, instance or best algorithm to use, okay? So if we have data that kind of is more randomized, uh, so I don't know, just like a bunch of data points all over the place, um, we can actually still draw a uh, best fit line to this, but it's not going to be... Uh, very good, right? It's not going to be a good fit line. It's going to be a best fit line. So essentially we can draw a line and you might want to do something like downwards like this, but you might want to go across. Like you don't really know exactly what to do just by looking at it. And in a case like that, we're not going to want to use the linear regression algorithm. Linear regression uh, is when we have data that directly correlates to each other. So based on, for example, the student's first grade, uh, we can kind of somewhat predict what their final grade is going to be. If there's any kind of correlation that is um, somewhat strong, like some kind of strong correlation, then that is when we would use linear regression. Okay, so let me just go back to that first example I had. Um, so let's just draw, or not, I don't want to use red as my axis, we'll use black here and we'll draw another best fit line on some data points and talk about how the math goes on actually using this best fit line to well predict data so again this is our y this is our x that's going to be our data we'll have some outliers over here and then we'll have a best fit line that maybe looks something like that okay so if any of you have taken uh, high school math, so probably grade 9 or 10 math is like when I learned it, uh, this line can actually be defined by an equation, and that equation is y equals mx plus b. Now, some of you may know this as like y equals ax plus b. Uh, m is the same as a in this equation, okay? So essentially what this means is y is dependent on like this equation right here, okay? And we can find y by just manipulating these numbers um, and evaluating this equation. Now, what do these constants mean though? So essentially m is gonna be the slope of our line. And if you don't know what slope is, that is just how fast our line increases. We can have a negative slope or a positive slope. In this case, it is positive because as x increases, y increases. And you can see our slope can actually be found by taking two points on the line, so if I have a point here, <coughs> and I have another point here, excuse me, what we can actually do is we can say if this point, we're gonna call this P2, okay? And this point here is called P1. Well, these points have an X and a Y value, and to find the slope, all we have to do essentially is say the Y2 value of this point minus the Y1 value over top of the X2 value minus the X1 value is actually equal to our slope. And I can prove it to you, but I'm not going to do that because this, again, is not a math class. But this is how you can actually determine what the slope of this line is, how much it increases by. Now, obviously, if you pick um, a point 
like you can do this the other way around as well like you do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 that'll work fine because if you have two negative values they're going to cancel out and give you a positive but if you had a line that looks something like this you're going to get a negative slope value because your point uh one will be up here your point two will be down here you're going to be subtracting a larger value from the top so you're going to get a negative number right uh, but anyways that's enough on kind of deep math for that so let's just erase this we don't need this anymore so that is our slope and that is what m is okay how much our line increases by but what is b well b is actually our y intercept all right and that is where i'm kind of doing this big dot right now um where we start our line at so essentially right this is our y intercept because this is where uh, our line intercepts the y axis and our line will actually keep going down in this direction as well um if we had like negative x values right so that's what b stands for and essentially what the computer does when we give it all of this data when using linear regression is it creates this line okay and then when we want to predict a value so it uses this equation to predict the value so say i have a student and say this is like representing their grade one and this is representing their final grade if i have a grade one of say like 17 because our grades are to 20 um, it's going to plug 17 into this equation i'm going to say y is equal to whatever our m value is times 17 uh, why is it doing that plus our b value and sorry i just butchered all of that writing but you get what i mean so m times 17 plus b it's going to generate a y and that y is actually going to be our predictive value and what we predict now this is really simple if you look at it in 2d space but um we actually have multiple variables or attributes when we create this best fit line and so it's going to create a best fit line in multi-dimensional space for us which i can't really show you because it's actually impossible to visualize but i can show you an example of what it looks like in 3d space uh really quickly okay how much time are we at six minutes so i'll just keep going uh, get this explanation out essentially if this is our origin so zero 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 we could have a, uh if we have two variables like say we have g1 and g2 and this is going to be our um, G3. Well, we can create a best fit line that kind of goes through like coordinate space, like something like this. Now, this seems weird, but essentially, uh, if this is on like G1, G2, and then we have like this, we can create it in multi dimensional space using all these different variables. Now, you don't really have to understand like how this is working. Um, but that's what the computer is doing for us. It's using all these attributes to create a best fit line in like whatever space, uh, how many attributes we have. Okay. So I think that's all I'm going to talk about for linear regression. Essentially it's a best fit line Y equals MX plus B. And I'm actually going to get the constants of that line for us so I can show you how it works. Okay. So now let's move into actually, uh, coding. All right. So to actually code this best fit line, let me just put my tablet away. What we need to do is we need to create a uh, like a training model. So I'm just going to say linear and this is again in PyCharm is equal to linear model dot linear regression. OK, and this is just going to be I don't know why I put a semicolon used to Java now is going to be what we're uh, working with. So linear regression. And what I'm going to do now is I'm literally just going to type linear, uh, which is our model dot fit. And then I'm going to give it X underscore train y underscore train like this okay and what this is going to do is it is just going to fit this data um, to find like a best fit line right using the x train data and the y train data and it's going to store that line in linear and then we can use that to actually test um, our test data on it so now that we have this line because we fitted the model to it or whatever we can actually do linear dot uh, score and then in here we can actually score uh, x test and y test now this is going to return to us a value that's going to represent the accuracy of our model so i'm just going to say acc equals linear dot score and what this is going to stand for is just accuracy and we're just going to print this out to the screen to see how accurate we're actually getting and this is literally all you have to do to actually create a model and uh see how well that model is working or how well the algorithm is is uh, working okay this is all you have to do so i'm just going to run this and instead of samples what's the issue here give me one second guys x train y train okay so i looked through here and i realized i've made a very slight mistake so what i actually need to do here is just swap this test and train variable so all i'm just going to say i'm going to say x underscore test and uh, y underscore train and this should be uh, hopefully fixing things for us my apologies about that guys 
So we'll run this now, and now we can see we're actually getting an accuracy of 86.8%, uh, or like 0 0.86, like out of one, right? Okay, and that's not bad. Uh, obviously, we can do better, but for actually determining students' grades, because it's not a like extremely concrete mathematical thing that we can do with that. That's pretty decent that based on just these uh, six attributes or these five attributes, G1, G2, study time, failures, and absences, we can determine with 86.8% accuracy what a student's grade is going to be at the end of the year. And I think that's pretty cool. But that's what where a lot of people will stop, right? They'll say, okay, you got 86% accuracy. That's great. But how do we actually use this model now? So now that we've created this model, um, we want to use it and actually test it on data and see like what we're actually getting. So what I'm going to do is um, first I'm going to show you the constants because remember I was telling you how this works with like y equals mx plus b. Well, I'm going to show you what those coefficients are, so what m is and what b are for this actual line. So to do this, I'm just going to print out. Uh, we'll just say co as in like coefficients plus linear and dot coefficients like this and it's going to actually give us a list of all the different coefficients and I'm going to print out intercept like this okay and again plus and now linear dot intercept and this is going to show us the y intercept so if I run this uh, did not contain a loop with signature matching type one second let's see what the issue is here okay so it turns out the issue was uh, <laughs> what do you call it that I was trying to add these things together because now I'm used to Java programming anyways We're just gonna throw a little comma here. I just added this coefficient and a backslash at end so it goes on the new line um, But essentially that sorry that was the issue. I was trying to add these things together We just have to do comma, okay, and you see actually I ran this just to make sure this is working and down here now We're actually getting all the coefficients of our five different variables and we're getting our intercept, uh, which is negative 1.47, uh, right? And you can see the accuracy has dropped a little bit, but that's going to happen once in a while. Uh, our accuracy is going to fluctuate within a few percentages just because when we train it, it's going to be different each time. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, so this is actually these coefficients here that I'm showing, sorry, down here are actually those that the M coefficient. So I was showing you Y equals MX plus B. Now, that's the equation for a line in two dimensional space. Uh, a line in five dimensional space needs five coefficients. So like five kind of M's. You can think of it as like uh, MX plus uh, MX plus like, I don't know, like ZY plus CW, like a bunch of different variables. They all have their own coefficients. And these are actually the coefficients that we've generated for those variables. And you can kind of see the bigger the coefficient, the more weight uh, it, it actually each, what do you call it, uh, attribute actually has in our um, like defining you know what grade we're going to get and then this is our intercept uh, so yeah so that's great we got our coefficient and we have our intercept but now i actually want to show you how this works on a real student so how we can use this to predict based on uh, a student's information what grade they're going to get because right now we're just getting a bunch of numbers we're not actually seeing any like um I don't know good output on how this works so you'll see what i mean in just a second but essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this model to predict i'm going to say linear dot predict and i'm going to say x underscore test okay so what i'm going to do here i'm going to store this in predictions uh is that even how you spell it i don't know but predictions equals linear dot predict x underscore test what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually print out all the predictions and then I'm going to show you what the input data was for that prediction. So essentially this is going to take um, an array or an array of arrays in our case and it's going to do a ton of predictions and guess what all of these are on the test data that we did not train our model on because we only trained it on the train data, right? And then we'll see what we're actually like what that input was. So I'm just going to say 4x in range and then if I spelled range correctly we'll do the length of our predictions. Okay. And then what we're going to do, so used to Java now, sorry guys, we're, uh, we're going to just print out the prediction. So in this case, we'll do uh, predictions X, and then we'll also print out what that input data was. So that input data is going to directly correlate to X underscore test uh, X value. And then we're going to print out what the actual value of the final grade was, which is going to be Y underscore test uh, X. And now if I run this, uh, you'll see we actually get some pretty interesting output. 
So we got a bunch of stuff printing out here because they're just printing all of them. But essentially, right, uh, you can see we have 15.2219, right, as our answer, okay? And the mid or the beginning grade was 15. Their uh, end of term grade or like second semester grade was that. They had two uh, hours of study time. They had zero failures and they had four absences and their actual grade was 15. So we got pretty close by getting 15.2 and I believe uh, we're getting a ton of decimal numbers, but these are always going to be rounded off. So we could actually round these and get better accuracy, uh, but that's fine for now. So this is one where we made a mistake, right? You can see that uh, their first grade was six, their second grade was five. Uh, they had one hour study time, one failure, and they got a grade of zero. And we were saying they were going to get a grade of four. Okay, so we got low, but we still didn't get the correct answer here again, right? 14. Uh, the correct answer was 14, 12, 12, 13, 12.79, 12 10, 9.4, 9, 8, right? So we're getting very, very close um, to the actual answers. And you guys can look through these and kind of play around with them. But essentially, that's how you'd use it to uh, predict based on input what our, uh, what the grade would be. And you can see we're getting like pretty close with most of these answers, at least within one or two points for almost all of them, which I think is kind of amazing because only in like 20 or 30 minutes, we've been able to set this up, understand how it works. And now we can actually use this on uh, like real in real life situations to predict a student's certain uh, grade based on these pieces of information. So anyways, that has been it for linear regression. Uh, in the next video, I'm actually not sure what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be another basic machine learning algorithm. A bit more advanced than this, we're going to go through and play with all of them, understand how they work, and then again move into neural networks. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like. You guys should definitely follow my Twitter if you want to know when the next video is coming out. And with that being said, I guess I'll see you in the next video.